Hi, Andrew here. Today we're going to take a look at some 9mm Supervel 115 grain subsonic. Now, if you don't know a lot about subsonic ammo or 9mm silencers or whatever, um, it's fairly typical to see bullet weights of about 147 grains for subsonic ammo in 9mm. 115 grain is very light and normally extremely supersonic, so it's unusual to see subsonic 9mm at 115 grains. However, Supervel stuff has done pretty well in most of the other tests that we've done recently. Let's see how it does in this. A friend of mine allowed me the use of his CZ Scorpion with a 7.72 inch barrel. So we're gonna shoot it out of that, as well as my own Glock Model 22 with a nine millimeter Lone Wolf conversion barrel in it. Let's get out to the range and take a look. Okay guys, these first two shots, of course, left the block. Again, I have terrible luck with that. I try to put these shots as close to the side of the block as I can so that you can see it easily. But of course that means that sometimes they exit. So I took a couple of extra shots off camera. They penetrated to 14 inches and uh, 14 7 8 Both expanded right away. Obviously, ideal penetration on both of them. Sometimes you can be a little bit worried about um, inadequate penetration with bare gel, um, especially with lighter bullets, but this is a solid copper and subsonic velocity. There's not much to worry about there. The real question is whether it can still expand after passing through heavy clothing at subsonic velocity. So let's flip this block around, take a couple more shots with four layers of denim. All right, so I had to take several shots there to get one that'll stay in the gel on high speed. <laughs> um, out of the first couple of shots I took, it stayed in the gel, but the high speed didn't capture the ones that were in the gel. Long story, but ultimately I got three to stick. Fourteen and a quarter. Thirteen and three quarters and 13 and one quarter. Looks like all of them expanded well, and of course the penetration is just about ideal. That cute little plug of denim in there like we often see. There's another one. Let's see if I can do this without slicing up my finger. So these pedals are sharp. And that's in there really deep. That's what she said. I might have to get two fingers into this block. There we go. <laughs> that did not come peacefully. All right, so if we set these up next to each other, we can see that they are 
relatively uniform, expanded fairly large. If we pull these denim plugs out, we can see that they expanded about as fully as they can before the pedals would start to fold back along the shank and cause over expansion. We'll get some photos and some measurement at home, but that should give you a rough idea of what these look like. I'd say that's pretty good. Now, first off, I would like you to note how ridiculously close these measurements are. They're literally thousandths of an inch from each other. That is an insane level of consistency that you almost never see in recovered projectile. I mean, just bear in mind the violent process of firing and impacting gel and still ending up with that level of precision. Pretty impressive. Now I chose to shoot the bear gel out of the longer barrel and the heavy clothing out of the pistol because I wanted to set up a condition where we had a worst case and best case type scenario or vice versa, or maybe worst case at both ends. That is, if a bullet fails in bear gel, it'll fail because it's moving too quickly, it expands too much, it penetrates too poorly, too shallowly. If a bullet fails in heavy clothing, it's usually the result of moving too slowly and the clothing fibers pack it up too much and it can't expand. So both cases were a sort of worst case for that type of test. And in both cases, it did very, very well. Now this load was just barely supersonic when we fired out of the Scorpion. Obviously it's tuned for a service pistol length barrel. Uh, when we fired it out of the, the Glock, we got just barely under 1,100 feet per second. That's important because at sea level, at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, the speed of sound is 1,125 feet per second. So they nailed <laughs> the velocity needed to keep this subsonic out of service pistol length barrels. They pushed this as fast as they could get it to go, leaving themselves just enough margin for error that it shouldn't ever cause a ballistic crack from a pistol barrel. Obviously it does from the CZ Scorpion, that's not what they designed this for. That said, it's possible that you might get a ballistic crack if you shoot this in colder temperatures. Now for the record, when we took these measurements, the barometer read 29.97 and the temperature was 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Your results at your range could certainly vary depending on pressure, altitude, humidity, and lots of other factors. Obviously, the ammunition can move faster or slower depending on temperature, but more importantly, the speed of sound varies with the temperature of the air, the humidity, pressure, all of those things. If you have any questions or if you think I got something wrong, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your input. If you want to rent a Phantom high-speed camera like the one that I used to make the video for this test, Get in touch with AIM Research. Their contact information is in the doobly-doo. Have a great day.